Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Crystal. Last time, we made our way all across the ocean here to Cianwood City, and we also got a new party member in the form of our shiny Electabuzz. Oh, so beautiful it is. Anyway, this time, we are going to be exploring Cianwood City a little bit, because there's a little bit that we should probably get out of the way right here. 500 years of tradition. Cianwood City Pharmacy. We await your medicinal queries. Very cool. We want to head in here and speak to the pharmacist. Your Pokemon appear to be fine. Is something worrying you? The lighthouse Pokemon is in trouble. I got it. This ought to do the trick. And we get the secret potion completely free of charge. Very cool. My secret potion is a tad too strong. I only offer it in an emergency. Now, believe it or not, this is an actual store. He will stock Potion, Super Potion, Hyper Potion, Full Heal, and Revive. Very, very cool. Now, it's worth noting, he will not give you the Secret Potion if you have not spoken to Jasmine at the Lighthouse first. So if you come all the way across the ocean here, before you go to the Lighthouse, you're pretty much going to be stuck. Anyway, now that we've gotten that out of the way, there's a few things that we can do here. First off is this guy. I... I'm in shock. A guy about your age with piercing eyes and long hair came in. He scared me into giving him my prized Pokemon. I still have one left, but what if he comes back? He looks strong. Could you look after my Pokemon for a while? Sure. Oh, thank you. Take good care of it, please. And we will receive a Pokemon. What Pokemon is this? Well, it turns out it is... A Shuckle, nicknamed Shucky. This Pokemon is interesting. It will act like a traded Pokemon, although you technically didn't trade for it, because in case anyone doesn't know, traded Pokemon will get, I believe, a 1.2 times multiplier on experience they earn in battle. And they also are governed by, you know when you get a gym badge and they're like, Pokemon up to a certain search level will obey you and some will not? This one will obey the same rules. So if we get it above the level that Morty mentioned earlier, without getting any more badges, it will actually start to disobey us, which is definitely interesting. If we scroll over here, we can see there are its moves and its stats, but it's also holding a berry. And this brings up something interesting about Shuckle that I've never mentioned before. In Generation 2 only, I believe, if you give a Shuckle a berry and just let it sit for a while, it'll eventually turn into a new item called Berry Juice, which will still activate as a held item, but it, re it will restore 20 HP instead of 10, which is really interesting. Now, this guy right here, whose name is Mania, by the way, he will eventually want this Pokemon back. I'm not sure what the requirements for it are, but I think you just have to sort of wait a little while. Let's see if I can speak to him. Oh, thank you. Take good care of it, please. Yeah, I guess we have to wait a little bit. Now, when he does want it back, if this Shuckle has very high happiness, he'll actually let you keep it. But if it doesn't, he will insist that you give it back. But before you give it back, he will ask you to equip the Berry Juice if it has been converted. And if he requests it back and you refuse him, he'll actually accuse you of thievery, which is kind of funny. Anyway, I might come back and show more of that later. But I don't really have plans to do that right now, just because, like, we have to wait a little bit. And it's really just a little side thing, which I think is kind of funny. I read this sign already. Alright, now up here, I believe it is, we have this building. Cianwood City Photo Studio. Take a snapshot as a keepsake. If we go in here, speak to this guy. You have magnificent Pokemon with you. How about a photo for a souvenir? If you say yes... Okay, big smile now, which Pokemon should I photograph? He will allow you to take a photograph of any of the Pokemon in your party, and you can hook up a Game Boy printer to print out their status screen. So if we pick a Pokemon... Alrighty, hold still for a bit. We're gonna throw printer error too, because we do not have a printer hooked up. But yeah, you can use this guy to print out Pokemon summaries, Pokedex entries, mail, things like that. Really, really neat. Anyway, right around here, one of these rocks has an item underneath it. I think it's this one? 
No, it's not. Maybe it's this one. So I brought our Rattata just to smash these rocks, just in case we can find what we want. Yep, there it is. Max Ether. Very, very cool. Now, I believe there's actually another rock around here somewhere that will have another item underneath it. And it's not even that one. Of course it's not. The Poke Seer ahead. Very cool. This is a feature that is only in Crystal version, but I'd really like to find this item beneath a rock first. That's not it. Come on, game. I want the item, not the Pokemon. There we go. Revive. Very nice. Now, if we head inside this house here, this house is only in Crystal version. It's not in Gold and Silver. And I'm not sure if it's in the remake, actually. I see all. I know all. Certainly, I know of your Pokemon. If we inform this lady of our ownership of this shiny Electabuzz... Hmm, I see you met Electabuzz here. Goldenrod City. The time was day. Its level was five. Am I good or what? Incidentally, it seems to have grown a little. Electabuzz seems to be becoming more confident. Very cool. This Pokeseer will tell you where and when and at what level a party member was caught if you bring that party member to her. Now, this doesn't work with traded Pokemon, and I have a feeling that's because this lady wasn't in Gold and Silver, so it felt no need to save that information back then. But yeah, it's really, really neat right here, and I believe it also works as a kind of happiness raider, which is real cool. Anyway, you might have spotted something else in the upper right corner of the screen right there, so I think we're going to go check that out next. Love this music, by the way. Yo, David. Wasn't that Suicune just now? I only caught a quick glimpse, but I thought I saw Suicune running on the waves. Suicune is beautiful and grand, and it races through towns and roads at simply awesome speeds. It's wonderful. I want to see Suicune up close. I've decided. I'll battle you as a trainer to earn Suicune's respect. Come on, David. Let's battle now. Alright, we are actually having a bit of a boss fight against Yuzine right here, after we have seen Suicune in Sienwood City. This is Mystical Man Yuzine, the only trainer in the entire series to use this specific trainer class. In HeartGold Soul Silver, it is actually changed to Mystery Man, and I believe that trainer class actually appears in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness very briefly in an exhibition battle near the start of the game. Anyway, starting off with Golbat here, because this Drowsy is level 23, and it knows the moves Hypnosis, Disable, Confusion, and Dream Eater. And as you can probably guess, it is weak to Bite, so I want to bring it down as quickly as possible, because it has that Hypnosis-Dream Eater combo that I am oh so afraid of. Luckily, it looks like it's not going to be able to get it off, which is really, really nice. And down it goes. Alright, Golbat's growing a little bit here. I'd really like Golbat to evolve soon for reasons we're probably going to get into either later this episode or early next episode. Alright, next up is Haunter. I'm going to keep in with Golbat here because Haunter is also weak to my bite attack. Haunter is level 23, and it knows the moves Hypnosis, Lick, Mean Look, and Curse. Very nice. And there's Mean Look right there, although I really had no plans on switching because it's already weak to my moves, so we should be alright. Alright, down goes Haunter, and Golbat gets to a clean level 26. Very nice. Next up, we have Electrode right here. I brought Cubone specifically for this purpose. I'm not sure how well this is going to go, though. This Electrode is level 25, with the moves Sonic Boom, Rollout, Screech, and get ready for this, Thunder. So yeah, if you can bring out a Pokemon that is immune to Thunder, like Cubone is right here, that's very good, because if this thing hits you with a Thunder, Thunder is incredibly powerful as an Electric-type move. And you do not want to take a hit from that if you can avoid it. So it looks like his biggest threat against Cubone right here is actually Sonic Boom, which means we get a guaranteed extra turn right here, unless he goes for Rollout, which is going to do a lot less. Yeah, there we go. One more Bone Club, and that should bring down Electrode very quickly right there, with a nice little pointless critical to boot. And Cubone gets level 22. Very cool. And we have won. 
I hate to admit it, but you win. And we get quite a bit of money for winning. Wow. You're amazing, David. No wonder Pokemon gravitate to you. I get it now. I'm going to keep searching for Suicune. I'm sure we'll see each other again. See you around. And off he goes. Nice little event right here in Crystal. I really like how they added a bit more of a story to this guy. In fact, I'm not sure if he was even uh, in Gold and Silver at all, so yeah, I really like the addition of characters in here. Anyway, I'm going to go heal real quick. Alright, now that we're all healed, I think we're going to head right on over this way, because there's one last thing in this city that we should cover. You cross the sea to get here? That must have been hard. It would be much easier if your Pokémon knew how to fly, but you can't use fly without this city's gym badge. If you beat the gym leader here, come see me. I'll have a nice gift for you. Yes indeed, there is a gym right here, Sienwood City Pokemon Gym, Leader Chuck. His roaring fists do the talking. Now it's worth noting, in the remake there's actually quite a bit more to this city. There's actually a gateway that goes further west to routes 47 and 48, and you'll eventually find a safari zone there, which is really really cool. Unfortunately it's not in Generation 2 at all, so not much to talk about there. Anyway, head on into the gym right here, and you'll notice there is no gym guy right here. Where is he, you ask? Horrendous voice crack aside, he's actually in the Pokemon Center. The Pokemon gym trainers here are macho bullies. If I stick around, they might come after me. Here's some advice. The gym leader uses the fighting type, so you should confound him with psychic Pokemon, which we don't have at the moment. Wipe out his Pokémon before they can use their physical strength. And those boulders in the middle of the gym? If you don't move them correctly, you won't reach the gym leader. If you get stuck, go outside. Yes indeed, this guy makes actual in-game reference to the fact that boulder puzzles will actually reset themselves if you reload the map. Also worth noting, if you did not get strength from the cafe in Olivine City, I feel sincerely bad for you. Anyway, once we got all that out of the way, we can come in here and fight some of the gym trainers here. My Pokémon and I are bound together by friendship. Our bond will never be broken. Alright, I believe this is our introduction to Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan right here. We have Black Belt Yoshi, which is kind of funny. Yep, here we have Hitmonlee. Very cool. This guy has a Hitmonlee, and the guy directly across from him has a Hitmonchan, and it's worth noting I'd recommend being very, very careful right here, because if you come in here and just walk right up through here, you're going to be fighting both these trainers. Like, you can't go back and heal in between. Now, one thing that the gym guy noted that I think is very important. Fighting Pokemon are generally very physically oriented, which means confusing them can result in them taking a lot of damage if they manage to hit themselves. So I definitely recommend trying that out as much as you can, because if they do hit themselves, they are going to be in pain. What? That was like one turn, okay? Hey, hey, hey. Anyway, you'll notice he had a move called Jump Kick on him. That move, as well as a more powerful variant called High Jump Kick, are interesting because they will inflict recoil on the user, but only if they miss, which I think is pretty fascinating. High Jump Kick deals a lot more damage to the user if they happen to miss. Jump Kick, not too terribly much. Also, these guys are really, really uh, having their way with me, to put it entirely bluntly. So I think we're going to send out Electabuzz and try and clean up here, because these guys really don't have much to do against my Thunder Punch right here. Yeah, there we go. All right. Go back at some experience, Electabuzz gets almost to level 31, which is kind of crazy. This isn't real, he says. Oh, I assure you, it is real. Alright. We martial artists fear nothing. Now, I believe the way this works is the one that you step closer to is the one that actually fights you first. Black Belt Lao right here has hit Munchan, which is actually a more defensive Pokémon, not very offensively oriented when you compare it to Hitmonlee. So we're going to try and confuse it right here to make our lives a little bit easier. And it became confused. Please hit yourself. 
Yes, of course, the more defensive one is the one that hits itself. But yeah, I'm going to switch out to Electabuzz again. And some people might be disagreeing with me with how much I've trained up Electabuzz, but trust me, there is a fearsome Pokemon at the end of this area, and I really, really don't want to have to mess around with it. I want to be able to just go in there and one-two thunder punch it to death. Ugh. If we can't take it out, we're going to be in some serious trouble. Alright, this thing actually has Comet Punch, which is interesting. Not sure what's so special about Comet Punch right there. I think it's like like a fighting type version of Fury Attack or something like that. Very interesting stuff. Anyway, Electabuzz gets level 31. Very nice indeed. That's shocking. Uh, it's funny how he said that considering what I used to defeat him. Anyway, I'm going to go heal up real quick because we actually took kind of a beating from those fights. Alright, now that we are back from healing up, we have trainer number three right here. Words are useless. Let your fists do the talking. Now this is what I don't get. Like, fighting type Pokemon trainers are always like these crazy black belt bodybuilder type characters. But like, they pretty much always just use their Pokemon for combat, so I really don't understand why this guy's like, let our fists do the talking. Don't you mean let your Pokemon's fists do the talking? Because that's how conflict works in this world. You battle Pokemon. Like, when was the last time someone actually beat up somebody else in Pokemon? Like, ever? Let's be honest right here. Anyway, I think we're going to switch out to Croconaw right here, because Croconaw's a little bit underleveled for where I generally like it to be. But I think that'll be okay, I guess. Usually my starter is always, like, right around the highest level Pokemon on the team, and it's actually kind of underleveled compared to Electabuzz. So I'd like to get it caught up a little bit. Alright, so we're going to use Surf right here. And this could be a one-shot? I doubt it, though. Oh, wow, it was actually real close. Alright, can you finally hit yourself with confusion? No. Come on. <laughs> I keep talking up how awesome Confusion is for this gym, and it's just really not working out for me. Ay ay ay. Alright, down goes Machop right here, and what's your next Pokemon gonna be? Some tells me it's gonna be a Mankey or a Primeape. No, it's a Machoke. Okay. I think we'll stay in here because I really don't trust Croconaw to be able to take a switch in too terribly well, because it is kind of low on health already. See, this is why I was scared of this gym and its trainers, because they are really good at just some raw damage output. And like, look at that, Rock Slide? Seriously? I feel like this is one of the earliest times in any Pokemon game that you can actually encounter the move Rock Slide on an AI opponent. Because like, we only have four badges, and we're already seeing it. Like, that scares me, that legitimately does scare me. Alright, down he goes. Silent type, aren't we? Alright, took that opportunity to heal our Pokemon, and right here, we have a strength puzzle. Now, I know this puzzle got a lot of people stuck back when they first played this game. I think I got stuck a little bit, but the solution came to me pretty quickly. Push that one up, push that one up, and push this one to either side. And you're through. Really not too terribly difficult. My raging fists will shatter your Pokemon. We can't have that, now can we? Now I suppose another way to get past that puzzle is you just start the battle animation and they'll just sort of unload right there. Nah, it does, doesn't really work that way. Sometimes I wish it could, but yeah. Now, anyone who's kind of jealous that I got through this strength puzzle pretty easily as a kid, don't worry, there's a strength puzzle later on in this game that took me quite a bit longer to figure it out, if I remember correctly. Anyway, we have a Mankey here, fighting type as normal, and once again, this confusion really isn't working out for me. Now, unfortunately, Golbat is pretty much only good for confusing opponents in this gym, which is kind of unfortunate. I don't know when Golbat is supposed to learn Wing Attack or any other type of flying type move. And, wow. Confusion wore off that quickly. Ay, ay. But yeah, I feel like Golbat would be much more useful in this gym 
if it had a flying type move, but unfortunately as of right now it doesn't, and I don't think there's any way for me to get one aside from leveling it up a little bit more, which I really don't want to do. I'm trying to avoid grinding as much as I can, just because grinding's really tedious and annoying. So I'm going to try and keep that to a minimum, although if I do have to grind, I assure you I will be doing it off screen just because I know how boring it is to watch because I've actually had to do it before. Sometimes for hours on end in these Pokemon Let's Plays. And it's not fun. Not fun. Anyway, Crocodile is trying to learn Scary Face, which I feel like it tried to learn before. So we're gonna leave that for now. Because I feel like pretty much every move on Croconaw I see get some use in the series, so don't want to mess with what already works. Anyway, got a Primeape right here, which is pretty scary, especially if it gets off a critical hit right here, which it doesn't, thank goodness. Ugh. Primeape, as you might have guessed, is the evolved form of Mankey, so pretty much in every respect this thing hits harder. And I feel like that was a really well-placed critical right here, because I do not have faith that my Croconaw would have been able to one-shot that thing otherwise. I got shattered. Yes indeed, you did. Alright, now that we've done that, we only have one trainer left, the gym leader. So I am going to go do one last heal and I will be right back. Now since this gym does require strength to navigate, I do have to bring Sudowoodo into this gym in order to fight the gym leader because I don't want to teach anyone else strength at the current time, which means someone's going to have to sit this one out. As you might have guessed, that someone is Eevee, because, like, do you really expect Eevee to be able to do anything in a fighting-type gym? Yeah, I didn't think so. Wahaha! So, you've come this far. Let me tell you, I'm tough. My Pokémon will crush stones and shatter bones. Watch this. And he has some sort of constipation attack. There, scared now, are you? What? It has nothing to do with Pokémon? That's true, that's what I was saying! Come on, we shall do battle! Alright, here we are against the 5th Gym Leader. You thought it was going to be Jasmine, but no, Chuck is actually the 5th Gym Leader in this game. He is going to open up with a Primeape, level 27, with the moves Leer, Rage, Karate Chop, and Fury Swipes. Honestly, not all that much on this thing is actually scary except for that Karate Chop because it has a heightened critical hit chance. And if it succeeds in getting that off, it can be a little scary. Hit yourself, please. Come on. Why can this AI never, ever hit itself? It's really, really unfortunate. Like, this gym is probably the most useful place for confusion, but I'm just having really terrible... Oh my god! I'm having really terrible luck with it, in case you couldn't tell. Like, Primeape's attack is really high, so if it actually hit itself with Confusion, it would do itself a lot of damage. But we're just not that- we're just not seeing it. Because we're just horribly unlucky people, apparently. Aye, aye, aye. Alright, yeah, Surf definitely would not have one-shotted that previous Primeape without, um, that critical hit right there, so... Very nice to have. And it looks like we're just in the range to two-shot this Primeape, which is really, really nice. Alright. Down it goes. Very good. Get a bit of experience for that. And next up is the Pokémon I was oh so afraid of. A Poliwrath. This thing is Water Fighting type, which means Electabuzz, your time is now. This Poliwrath is level 30 with the moves Hypnosis, Mind Reader, Surf, and Dynamic Punch. A little bit of explaining to do with this moveset right here. Mind Reader basically makes it so that the next move that Polyrath uses after using Mind Reader cannot miss. And that leads right into the other new move right here, Dynamic Punch. Dynamic Punch has like a coin flip's chance of hitting under normal circumstances, but if it does hit, it is guaranteed to inflict confusion. You see where he's going with this? Mind Reader followed by Dynamic Punch equals massive pain. Luckily, Electabuzz is faster and we can hit it with Thunder Punch and I want to do a boatload of damage to this thing. See, look, it even survived that. 
And luckily it missed that Dynamic Punch, because not only is Dynamic Punch guaranteed to inflict confusion if it hits, it also deals a lot of damage. So yeah. Some people might call my strategy here cheap. I call my strategy not wanting to get absolutely bodied by this Polyrath, so... Take that how you will. Pointless critical aside, down it goes, and we get 1100 experience. That might be one of the first times we've gotten over a thousand in the series. What? Huh? I lost? How about that? You're worthy of Storm Badge. I love that jingle. Storm Badge makes all Pokémon up to level 70 obey. Even traded ones, or even that Shucky, if you are that devoted. It also lets your Pokémon use Fly when you're not in a battle. Here, take this too. And we get TM01, which contains... Can you guess? It is Dynamic Punch. It doesn't always hit, but when it does, it causes confusion. Man oh man, that move can be real scary. Anyway, head right out here. We want to speak to this woman. You crossed the sea to get here. That must have been hard. It would have been much easier for Pokemon you had to fly. And that's CN Wood's gym badge. Then you should take this HM. And we get HMO2, which very fittingly contains fly. Teach fly to your Pokemon. You'll be able to fly instantly to anywhere you have visited. My husband lost to you, so he needs to train harder. That's good, since he was getting a little chubby. Oh, I love that line right there. Now, interesting thing about Fly right here. You're probably like, oh, we'll just teach that Fly to our Golbat and we'll be completely okay. Well... Unfortunately, Golbat cannot learn Fly. However, its evolution can. So eventually, Golbat will be able to learn Fly and we will be teaching it to Golbat. Unfortunately... That is not today. So, now you see why I recommended you grab something menial like a Pidgey, which I am going to go do for my PC right now. So, funny story, I could have sworn I caught a Pidgey off screen at some point to be like an HM slave or something and just never used it. But no, I actually do not have one. So, I actually have to surf back to Olivine City the old-fashioned way, which is really, really unfortunate and kind of embarrassing, considering I just accidentally didn't follow my own advice. But, uh, yeah, I guess we have to wait a little bit to demonstrate that move. Anyway, David, you won. I could tell by looking at you. Not too terribly interesting in terms of dialogue. Oh well, back to Olivine. So in all that shuffling around of the party, I noticed Eevee wasn't actually holding anything, so I gave it the pink bow in case anyone's curious. But with that, I think we are going to be ending things off here. So, this past episode of Pokémon Crystal, we explored Sienwood City a little bit. We saw Suicune racing on the water, we battled Yuzine, and we also challenged Chuck and managed to come out of the battle with Gym Badge number 5, the Storm Badge. Very, very cool. I like that design. And next time on Pokemon Crystal, now that we have returned from Cienwood City with a remedy for Amphi, I think we're gonna climb all the way back up to the top of the lighthouse, give it the medicine, and then see if we can challenge Jasmine for Gym Badge number 6. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.